Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the blessing of the Eid as a day to, to remind ourselves that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is greater than anything conceivable in our imaginations. لا تدركه الأوهام لا تبلغه الأوهام ولا تدركه الأفهام Imam Al-Tahawi says no imagination can achieve knowledge of Allah and no understanding can realize the true nature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala كل ما خطر ببالك فالله خلاه ذلك everything that has occurred to your heart Allah is other than that because only a created thought can come to your heart and Allah is the uncreated reality behind creation. Everything out there is witnessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one. Everything in the universe is testifying to the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything is being sustained by Allah. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the human being, gave him sight, gave him hearing, gave him understanding, consciousness. إن السمع والبصر والفؤاد كل أولئك كانوا عنهم مسؤولة. The hearing, the sight, and the understanding, all of those the human being is responsible for. And then through his rahma, through his grace, he sent messengers to teach people how to live, how to behave. And he made those messengers the best examples of how to live and how to behave. Nothing that they commanded, they didn't follow. They were the first to follow the words that they. Commanded. They were the first to believe. Amana Rasulu bima unzida ilahi. The Prophet believes in what was revealed to him. The Prophet himself believes in what was revealed to him. The Prophet, when he heard the Jews tell him about his descriptions in the Torah, when they would finish, he would say, Ashhadu anni Rasulullah. I testify that I am a messenger of Allah. The Prophet himself, his iman was growing in his heart, and this is the nature of the believer. His Iman should always be in increase. Ramadan is a time for increasing Iman. The preferred opinion of our ulama is that Iman increases when you increase your devotion to Allah. Ramadan is a time when you increase your devotion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why your Iman is higher. You're getting up before dawn in times that you can't do that. Some people weren't even getting up for dawn before Ramadan started. Some people weren't even getting up for Fajr. But in Ramadan, they find they're able to get up before dawn. They have a meal and then they pray. There's people that stay and get the reward of a Hajj and an Umrah. By staying until the shuruq, there's people that recited the Quran in its entirety several times in Ramadan. Some people twice, some people one time. Some people didn't have the tawfiq to do that, the success from Allah. But everybody had some taste of the Quran who participated in Ramadan. Allah is Rabbu Ramadan, but He's also Rabbu Shawwal. He's the Lord of Shawwal. Nothing changes after Ramadan. The Prophet ﷺ in the hadith Sahih, they said, he didn't increase in his prayer numbers in Ramadan or other than Ramadan. The Prophet ﷺ, his Iman was the Iman of Ramadan all through the year. Because Allah doesn't change. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the same. But He facilitates Ramadan in order to you, for you to prepare for what's coming after Ramadan. مَنْ صَامَ رَمَضَانْ وَأَتْبَعُوا سِتًّا مِنْ شَوَّالِ كَانَ كَصِيَامَ الدَّهَرِ in the hadith in Sahih Muslim and Ibn Majah relate the hadith, whoever fasts Ramadan and then follows it up with six days in Shawwal. And Imam Malik said six days any time after that until the next year. Debating on what that partitive uh, min means, min from. So those who want to stay in their state in Ramadan, the best thing to do is maintain your practice. Don't diminish your practice. The Prophet ﷺ reminded us to read the Quran. He said, whoever reads a hundred Quran is written from the highest people, a hundred verses of the Quran a day. There's a riwayah, 50 verses of a, a day, and you won't be written from the people of heedlessness. If you just do Ayat al-Kursi, and if you do Aman al Rasulu every day, which is in the many hadiths to do that. And if you do Surat Mulk, 50, 30 uh, ayah, the Prophet ﷺ said, there's a chapter in the Quran that has 30 verses. I wish it was in the heart of every believer. Mulk. Mulk will protect you in your grave. 
Mulk will protect you in your grave. The verse, the verse 30 verses of Mulk, Tabarak al al Mulk, will protect you in your grave. Don't lose your momentum. You were gaining momentum, and then you get into 10 days, don't, ah, Ramadan's over. Now I can go back to my heedlessness. Don't be that person. This is the time to keep your faith strong by keep continuing your ibadat. فَاسْتَبِقُوا khayrat. Vai in goodness. اَعْمَلَ الْخَيْرَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ Do good in order that you might have success. What I want to talk about this morning is something very important for this community. Muslims are under siege. It's very clear. Anybody that reads the news, anybody that sees what's going on there, out there, you don't, you don't need prognosticators to tell you what's going on out there. You can feel it. You don't need to read uh, your yahoo.com to know what's going on. Every day the headlines are about Muslims. Who did this? If you ask me, I say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did this. Because Muslims have been sitting on this religion for so long and not sharing it, the whole world's turning against them. Because this is the age of the internet, this is the age of mass communication, this is the first time in human history where you could be in a Christian country and openly talk about Islam and know what, they won't burn you. They might burn the Quran, but they won't burn you. This is the first time in human history, and yet the Muslims, are getting along with their business as if nothing mattered. We made you a moderate nation. That you might be a testimony to people about how they should behave. And the messenger will be a witness over you because you saw how he behaved. He's, he's the proof against us. You saw how the messenger of Allah behaved. You've read his seerah. You know how he dealt with his enemies. He dealt with them with magnanimity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Nahl, أَدْعُوا إِلَىٰ سَبِيلِ رَبِّكَ بِالْحِكْمَةِ Call to your Lord, to the way of your Lord, with wisdom. وَجَادِرْهُمْ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنْ وَالْمُعِدَةَ الْحَسَنَةَ وَجَادِرْهُمْ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنْ And give them a goodly exhortation. And speak with them, dialogue with them. Not argumentation, dialogue. جَادِرْهُمْ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنْ In the best way. Ahsan means the most beautiful way. Speak to them in the most beautiful way. لَيْسَ الْمُؤْمِنُ الطَّعَانِ وَلَا الْلَعَانِ وَلَا الْفَاحِشِ وَلَا الْبَذِي The Prophet ﷺ said, a, a, a Muslim, a mu'min, never curses. He doesn't curse people. He doesn't speak ill of people finding faults in them. He doesn't use foul language. He doesn't use harmful, noxious talk to people. قُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ husna. Speak to people in the best way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, in this verse, to talk with people in the most beautiful way. And then he says, إِنَّ رَبَّكَ أَعْلَمُ بِمَنْ ضَلَّ عَنْ سَبِيلِهِ Allah knows who's gone astray. وَهُوَ أَعْلَمُ بِالْمُهْتَدِينَ And he knows who is rightly guided. Allah knows who has gone astray and who is rightly guided. Just tell people. Don't argue about what they're doing. You'll never find the Prophet ﷺ complaining to the mushrikeen about what they were doing to him. Every time he spoke with them, he used it as an opportunity to explain to them what he believed. He didn't say, you evil people, don't you see what you're doing to me? You're oppressing my people, you're killing all the... He said, listen to these words. Listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Inna Allah ya'muru bil adili wal ihsan. Allah joins to good, to justice. Ya'muru bil adili wal ihsan. Wa yita'i dhal qurba. And he tells you to take care of your orphans and relatives, the widows, the weak amongst you. He calls you to economic justice. He calls you to treating people in the best way. Wa khadaq al nas bi khudaq al hasan. Interact with people with beautiful character. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he, he never raised his voice in the marketplace. And the marketplace is the one area in traditional cultures where you could raise your voice. The marketplace. But he didn't raise his voice in the marketplace. The Sahaba, this is Sahih Hadith. The Sahaba used to hate raising the voice when they were in jihad. When they were in jihad. A time you would think people would be raising their voices. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put sakina in their hearts. He put tranquility in their hearts. Why? Because they did dhikr of Allah. 
Allah bi dhikrillahi tatma'in al qulub. Isn't it with dhikr of Allah that the hearts are still? They're made tranquil. The Prophet ﷺ was then told, وَإِنْ عَقَبْتُمْ فَعَاقِبُوا بِمِثْلِ مَا عُقِبْتُمْ بِي In your da'wah, if they do things to you, then return. In respect, you have a right to defend yourself. وَلَئِنْ صَبَرْتُمْ لَهُ خَيْرُ لِلصَّابِرِينَ But if you're patient, yes, indeed, defend yourself, do those things that you have to do. But if you're patient, that's better for the people of patience. And then the command, وَاصْبِرْ you be patient. وَمَا صَبْرُكَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ And your patience is only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your patience is only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَا تَحْسَنْ عَلَيْهِمْ Don't be grievous about this. He told us we'll hear much noxious talk from them. He told us that we'll hear many things from them that bother us. أَذَنْ كَثِيرًا Things that bother us. Speaking the worst things, the Prophet ﷺ was told, وَاصْبِرْ وَمَا صَبْرُكَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ وَلَا تَحْزَنْ عَلَيْهِمْ Don't be depressed about this situation. Don't be depressed. وَلَا تَكُوْ فِي ضَيْقًا مِمَّا يَمْكُرُونَ Don't be in constriction by their plots. Don't be constricted by their plots. إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ تَقَوْ وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ مُحْسِنُونَ Allah is with the people of taqwa, the people of piety, the people who are obeying His commands, avoiding His prohibitions, and He's with the people of ihsan. Idfa' billati hiya ahsan. Wa man ahsanu qawlan min man da'a ila Allah wa amila salihan wa qala innani min al-Muslimin. Who is better than the one who calls to God, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and does righteous deeds, and says, I am amongst those submitted to the Lord of the world. I am amongst those submitted to the Lord of the world. But when you do that, people are going to get upset. They're going to harm you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Idfa' billati hiya ahsan. Give a wrong with a right. وَيَدْفَعُونَ بِالْحَسَنَةِ يَسَيِّئَةِ Allah says, they fight wrongs with rights. They don't fight wrongs with wrongs. هَلْ جَزَاءُ سَيَّةَ إِلَّا سَيَّةُ مِثْرُهَا That's true, but the ulama say the sayyah, the second one, is not a sayyah. It's a response to the sayyah. But Allah still says, if you look at all the verses where Allah says, you can have your retribution, you can do these things. But He says, after it, just look what He says immediately after it. But if you're patient. وَمَنْ تَصَدَّقَ but who gives out? وَمَنْ عَفَى وَأَصْلَحَ فَأَجْرُهُ عَلَى اللَّهِ But those who forgive, those who are righteous, those who rectify, their reward is without every single, look throughout the Qur'an, and you see what Allah says, الَّذِينَ يَسْتَمِعُونَ الْقَوْلَ فَيَتَّبِعُونَ أَحْسَنَ Those who listen to this speech, and they follow the best of this speech. They follow the best of this speech. The ulama, some of the ulama say, أَحْسَنَهُ are caught, the when Allah calls you to the higher way, you take that way. You don't take the low way. You don't take the lower way. Even if it's acceptable, you take the higher way. This is a time when Muslims have to rise above their egos. They have to rise above their own tribalism, their own self-identity, their own uh, images of, 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 of worth that they put up higher than the deen sometimes. Wallahi, we are disgracing this religion in many, many places. People say, oh, you know, they're going to burn the Quran, let's burn the, the American flag. Before they even burn the Qur'an, just because they say they're going to burn, let's burn the American flag. The American flag to many people in this country is a sacred thing. When I was a, a boy in, in school, we, we, it, it was the tradition when I was a boy, the flag could not touch the ground. If it touched the ground, you burnt the flag, you desecrated the flag. That, that's when I was growing up. I was a flag boy in school. The person that puts the flag up at the school, they used to do that. I don't know if they do that anymore. The flag is something very sacred to many Americans, patriotic Americans. You burn their flag, what do you think they're going to do? Seriously, what do you think they're going to do? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَسُبَّ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ فَيَسُبُّ اللَّهَ عَدْوًا بِغَيْرِ عِلْمٍ كَذَلَكَ زَيَّنَّا لِكُلِّ أُمَّةً عَمَلَهُمْ Do not curse the idols of those who call on other than Allah. Because they in turn will curse Allah out of ignorance. In other words, you've caused them to curse Allah by your cursing their, the things they hold sacred. That's what Allah says in the Qur'an. That came because the Prophet used to speak about the idols and then the, the Jahili Arabs would get angry and they would say things about his Lord. And so Allah said, no, don't do that. 
Don't speak about their idol. Just tell them about God. Forget about their idols. Tell them about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah says something very powerful. Everything in the Quran is powerful. But reflect on this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, like that, we have made every ummah, every community deem their actions beautiful. They think what they're doing is right. They think what they're doing is good. Every group thinks this. They think what they're doing is good. It, many people that went overseas to Iraq, these soldiers to Iraq and Afghanistan, they thought they were doing good. Now some of them have become murderers. They have seven young soldiers who probably were just like these innocent people here in this community, people that you work with, people that you uh, have transactions with in stores. A 21-year-old young man who should be in college studying or learning some trade. But instead he's over shooting an Afghani farmer. Not even a combatant, just for sport. Seven soldiers, and then they tried to cover this up, mutilating the bodies. One of the positive things, despite these terrible atrocities, one of the positive things is that there are people that have consciousness. They're conscientious people. They reveal these things. That's why we know about them. It can enrage Muslims, but that is something that is positive about this community. When General Patton went to Morocco, landed first in Morocco, he begins his memoirs, my war. He has a book about the World War II. General George Patton, he's considered one of the greatest generals in American history. His opening statement in that book, as he arrives in Morocco, he said, just finished reading the Quran, a good and interesting book. Now you can't get more American than General George Patton. He's as red, white, and blue as the flag. But when he went to a Muslim country, he wanted to know what, what do these people believe? And so he read the Quran and he said, a good and interesting book. That was his assessment. This was a man who knew Greek, who knew Latin, who spoke French. He knew the history of the ancient world. He was a military historian. He was an educated man. He read the Quran and he said, a good and interesting book. He didn't say this book should be burnt. When he met with the king of Morocco, he said, invariably, some of our soldiers will do heinous things. This goes with any group of people. They always have fools amongst them. And he said, but I want you to immediately tell me of any incident. He said, if anyone rapes, we will hang them. And he said that the king of Morocco lit up. And he said, this will bring great joy to the Moroccan people if miscreants are dealt with, with this kind of justice. We haven't told people who we are. We're letting other people define who we are. We're letting other people tell us who we are. They're saying, this is an evil group. These are devil worshippers. These are people that, that are violent people. Really, violent. There's Afghanis in here. Peaceful people. Trying to get by. Leaving their job. Like the Bengali taxi driver in New York City. Simple Muslim. Probably prayed five times a day. He had a beard. And the man says to him, are you a Muslim? And he says, yes. Not ashamed. He could have said, no, no, I'm not a Muslim, I'm Hindu. But he said, I'm a Muslim. The man said, salam alaikum. And then he took a knife out and, and slit his throat. And missed his juggler vein. He could have killed that man. He could have killed that man. This is the type of environment that has been created by the seeds of hatred that have been sown in the hearts of too many people in this country. Americans generally are patient people. They're patient people. You know that. You've lived in this country. Those of you who are immigrants, you've lived long enough to know that. That people here generally are good people. They're patient people. But if you brainwash people, if you give them messages day in and day out, they will begin to believe those messages. And then they can do the most heinous things. They can do the most heinous things. Our houses are increasingly becoming less safe in this country. Our massages are increasingly becoming less safe in this country. We've had now several massages since the Mosque 51, the Park 51 incident. Several massages have been abused in this country, including Fresno, California, right down the road. The people doing this are often, they're not bad people, per se. They're not evil people. We make 
each group think what they're doing is good. These people think they're, they're doing something good. These are evil people. We have to stop them because they've been brainwashed. If the Muslims don't wake up and recognize, one, the immense opportunity we have for the first time in the history of this country since the beginning of this country in which people were very interested in Islam. This is a fact. In this country, early on, because of the problems with Libya, the problems with Algeria, the first country to recognize the United States of America was Morocco. Benjamin Franklin, in his autobiographies, when there was a preacher that came to Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love, the first capital of the United States, there was a preacher that came and he had such an impact. The other preachers envied him, which is often the case when you have a, somebody who's effective in what they do, you have the enviers. And they wanted to prohibit this person from speaking anywhere in the city of Philadelphia. Benjamin Franklin said, I noted a change in the character of people since the coming of this man to Philadelphia. The people were actually behaving more with brotherly love, like Philadelphia. So you know what he said? I'm going to build a house that is free for anybody to say something good. Even if the Mufti of Constantinople wanted to come and tell the American people about Islam, he would find an open place in my, in, in, in my setting here. This is, this is the founding father, Thomas Jefferson, who said that he wanted to see an America that was safe for every type of Christian, every Jew, every Muslim, every Mohammedan. This is in his own writing. Every Mohammedan, every Hindu, for the Hindus and for even the atheists of every stripe. This was the dream of these early people. They did not want to see the type of religious bigotry that, that existed in Europe where people fought wars over what people believed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Say the truth from your Lord. Whoever wants to believe, let him believe. Whoever wants to disbelieve, let him disbelieve. La ikraha fid deen. La ikraha fid deen. There's no coercion in this religion. Things are clear. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَوْ شَاءَ رَبُّكَ لَآمَنَ مَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ كُلُّهُمْ جَمِيعًا If Allah wanted, everybody in the earth would believe. They would all be believers. If Allah wanted, He could do that. But what does He say? No. وَلَوْ شَاءَ رَبُّكَ لَآمَنَ مَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ كُلُّهُمْ جَمِيعًا أَفَأَنْتَ تُكِرْهُ النَّاسَ حَتَّ يَكُونُ مُؤْمِنِينَ Do you think you can force people to become believers? We're not out to convert the world. Muslims have never been out to convert the world. Really. Because our own book tells us, you can't convert the world. But all you can do is tell people, if they want to come in, welcome. If they want to stay out, you're free to do that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَالَّذِينَ هَادُوا وَالصَّابِينَ وَالنَّصَارَ وَالْمَاجُوسَ وَالَّذِينَ أَشْرَكُوا those who believe, those who are Jews, those who are Sabians, those who are Christians, those who are Magians, those who are idolaters, polytheists, all the groups, Allah will sort them out on the Day of Judgment. Just, just be patient. Be patient. Nobody's in a hurry. The day is coming and Allah says, I'll make everything clear. And then on that day, I'll send them back to their Lord. I'll send them back to their Lord. He will explain to them what they were doing. That's immediately after. And like that, we made every group think what they were doing was good. And then Allah says, I'm going to explain to them what they were doing. We have an immense opportunity. Shakespeare says, there's a tide in the affairs of men which if taken at the flood, right, leads on to ventures, a fortune, right, you get success. Omitted, then you spend your life in, sh in shallows and miseries. Upon such a sea are we now afloat. This is the time to tell people about Islam, who we are. Don't let other people define us. They have tools, we have tools too. The internet has democratized mass media. You can have more impact on the internet than you can on CNN if you're clever enough. There's YouTube videos now that have more people see those videos than, than see O'Reilly at any given time or Fox News. 
Muslims have to be creative. Tell people who you are. Really. If you can't do it yourselves, then empower those who are doing it. We have groups, Islamic Networks group, that's going out and teaching people about Islam, explaining to them what Islam is. Not to proselytize, to inform. Thomas Cleary said Americans can't even think about thinking about Islam. So we have to break down the barriers. We have to let them know who we are. This is an immense opportunity, people. The Prophet ﷺ asked for one thing from Quraysh. خَلُّ بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَ النَّاسِ Just let me talk to people. Don't, 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 don't stop me. Don't prevent me. Just let me talk to people. That's all the Prophet ﷺ asked. خَلُّ بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَ النَّاسِ He didn't want to fight. لا تتمنوا لقاء العدو Don't desire to meet your enemy. The Prophet ﷺ didn't want to fight. He was not a murderer. حَشَاهُ He was رَحْمَتَ He was ما أرسلناك إلا رحمة للعالمين He was a mercy to all the world. He loved guidance for people. He loved good for people. He praised the Jews when they did praiseworthy things. He praised the Christians when they did praiseworthy things. He praised the Mushrikeen when they did praiseworthy things. About Hilf al-Fudul, he said, I witnessed an alliance of virtue in the Jahaliya. If I was called to it in Islam, I would answer. The Prophet was not a fanatic, hashahu. He was not a prude. He was never an angry person. He said, لا تغضب. Don't get angry. Outrage is not anger. There are times to be outraged. There's times for indignation. Muslims should be outraged. But so should good Americans. People that are out there should be outraged at the type of prejudice, at the type of violence being directed to Muslims. They should be outraged. Is this the country that they want their children to grow up in? Increasingly looking like a fascist country if these things will continue? If these ideas proliferate? Is this the type of a country? Chris Hedges wrote a book about the, the, the right increasingly becoming like fascists, calling any dissent treason to dissent. Theodore Roosevelt, considered a great American, said it's not patriotic to agree with the president when he's wrong. This, this, this country was about dissent. It began as a movement of dissent. These are reactionary peoples. There's a rabbi in Florida that wrote a beautiful essay, and he identified three problems in this country. He said, the problem in this country is you have an extreme right that has an agenda. Many of them have alliances with warmongers who want to sell weapons, who want to create enemies out there. Russia is no longer an enemy. Let's make the Muslims an enemy. The Monterey Language Institute went from the dominant language that was being taught there 15 years ago was Russian. Now it's Arabic. New enemy. It's convenient when you have a, a, an industry that thrives on war. How do you convince people to give billions of dollars every year in taxes? Over 50% of the budget of this country, of the tax budget, is going to build weapons. How do you convince people? When people find out what has been done to them in this country, the economic injustice, all of these mortgages, people losing their jobs, all the jobs being shipped over by the same corporations that are building the weapons, shipping those jobs over to China, to Indonesia, to other places. Who cares about the American worker? Who cares about the American worker? So what do they do? What do they do? Just like they did to the, the, the poor white southerner. Turn all of your anger on the black people. They're the cause of all your problems. You're better than them. You were born with white skin. Right? That's what they did. Turn them on that. But they're still on the caboose of the train. Right? They're still on the caboose of the train. That's the, the, what they did. That was the strategy of certain demagogues in this country. Turn them on the black people. Now, before that, in Germany, when they had hyperinflation, what did Hitler say? It's all the Jews' problems. It's all the Jews' problems. It's not the fact that we started a war against all of the other Western countries. And now they've wiped us out, completely gutted our economy, and, and, and we're stuck to reap the bitter fruit of World War I. No, it's the Jews' problems. They've done this to us. And what happened? 
They had enough propaganda. They had their Fox News. Really, they had their Fox News. They had their propaganda machine. Goebbels taught a lot of these people how the thing works. Jacques Ellul wrote a book called Propaganda, which explains how much of Western propaganda now is based on the ideas of Joseph Goebbels, the only PhD amongst the inner circle of the Nazis. This is what's happening. Blame it on the Muslims. They're your problem. Don't blame it on all this warmongering. Don't blame it on the fact that we have a budget of defense that used to be called the Department of War. Now it's called Department of Defense. A budget that is nine times greater than all of the other military budgets in the world combined. Until a famous author from Boston could write a book called The Abode of War, calling America the abode of war, Dar al Harb. And that's an American calling America the abode of war. Every time they attempted to, to stoke the flames of war, Allah put those flames out. And they sow corruption in the earth. Allah doesn't love people that sow corruption in the earth. We should be peacemakers, not warmongers. Our religion is a religion that calls to peace. People can say, Ya khi, Muslims are being fought everywhere and you're saying peace. No, you think about what, what fighting a machine like this does to Muslims today. You think about that. Just think about the suffering that's been brought on the Iraqi people, the suffering that's been brought on the Afghani people, and then talk to me about war. No, we want to see these wars end. And Muslims have to wake up in this country because we have a, a destiny in this country. If we don't rise up to the destiny that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen this community to bring peace, the people in the future, I believe, will curse this community. They will curse them. All of those things they have, all that wealth, all that intelligence, all of that power, and yet they squandered it on 401k plans that dissipated before their eyes. Squandered it on a new car that they could have used their old car to have. Squandered it on big entertainment centers. That's not what we were created for. Aqulu qawli hada wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum risa'il al-muslimin. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, ala ma hadana, Allahu Akbar, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, ala ni'mat al-Islam, wa kafa biha ni'ma, ibadullah, usik wa usi nafsi bi taqwa Allah, be pious people, be good people, don't cheat the system, live within the laws, this is our religion, to be good citizens, this is our religion, be exemplars for this religion, you're here, you're not somewhere else. You have immense opportunities. Many of you have been blessed greatly. Use your wealth for good. Use your wealth. You, you get what you need and then, and then use it for good. Don't squander this opportunity. Life is very short. Many of us are growing old before our eyes. Really, we're getting older. This community has been here now for some time. We have young children. We need to sow the seeds for those young children to reap the benefits of our hard work and labor. Please, take it as an opportunity. Don't ignore the winds that are blowing out there. Don't ignore these winds. Really, many of the Jews in Nazi Germany, they didn't see those winds blowing. They didn't. They thought, it can't get, this, is, this must be as bad as it's going to get. We're watching it get worse and worse and worse. At which point, at which point, Really, if we allow this to happen, they will make it impossible for Muslims to live, to live in, this, in this land with their children without concern every time their child goes to school. But I believe in the heart of hearts, it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's waking us up. And if we don't wake up, if we don't wake up, we have no one to blame but ourselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, 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 has told us, tell people who you are. The Prophet ﷺ said, بَلِّغُ عَنِّي وَلَوْ آيَةً Empower people if you can't do it yourself. 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of our fasting, our standing in prayer. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guard all of your homes, guard your children, protect your women, protect the Muslims everywhere. May Allah make this land a safe land. May Allah prevent it from any harm coming to it. May Allah bring these leaders to the, uh, an understanding so that they pull out of places where they shouldn't be, where they leave people alone. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give wisdom to these people. Rely, may Allah give them wisdom, the people that are over us in authority. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah protect our women, especially those, all of them, but those who are openly Muslim, wearing the hijab with great courage. May Allah protect them. May Allah protect them from any harm coming to them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you people of the Qur'an all year long. May Allah give us understanding of the Qur'an. May Allah make us people of the Qur'an. May Allah increase our understanding of the Qur'an. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all of our sins. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala restore peace and order. Make us people of peace. Make us people of order. Bring the Muslims back to their senses if they've lost their senses. And make those of sense become leaders in our community. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah protect all the people in Afghanistan. All of them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring these troops home to their homes where they should be. May He protect the Afghan people from any harm. May He protect the people of Iraq from any harm. The people of Palestine. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect the people of Palestine. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them wisdom to come to some kind of agreement. May we be peacemakers. May Allah make us amongst those who call to peace. Ad-Darul Salam. In the end, the ultimate peace is in the Akhirah. This, war is, this, this world is a place of turmoil. It's a place of strife. It's a place of grief. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make all of you people of Akhirah. Make all of you people who know that ultimate peace is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But as long as we're in this world, may He make us people who struggle for the best, that call to the best. May, may He make us people of idfa' billati hiya ahsan, who return wrongs with rights. أقول خيري هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر جزاكم الله خيرا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله عيدكم مبارك